Could a planet like Sakaar exist? Stay tuned. Science behind Sakaar. Not long ago, we finally got a look at the trailer for Thor Ragnarok. Thor has a long history of just having weird things in general happen to him, but I've got to say, whatever happens here is not only weird, but aesthetically pleasing. And of course, we're all excited to see the Hulk return after two years, this time through a Planet Hulk like storyline. That, of course, means we'll be seeing Sakaar, an ancient Rome like planet that has got to be the single most colorful place in the MCU, which, in a lot of ways, is ironic. However, finally seeing one of our main heroes journey to a place beyond Earth brings up an age-old question, one that humanity has asked itself since it noticed that there was something beyond the sky. Do alien civilizations exist? Could they even exist? Or are we alone in the universe? Ultimately, this question has no definitive answer, speaking on a general scale. Everyone has their own opinion on whether we're alone or not, and really, that's not shocking. It's a tough question to ask. But the average person isn't the only one thinking about this. Scientists like Tesla and Einstein famously ponder the question of alien life. Ultimately, these and efforts like them culminated into ongoing research projects and persistent conspiracy theories. For one, NASA has been accused many times of airbrushing out images of UFOs in their space footage. In fact, it may sound crazy, but Air 51 is a real place. In the Nevada desert, there is a military base that people claim to see UFOs around. Coincidentally, this place is heavily restricted. By heavily, I mean the personnel are authorized to kill if anyone trespasses. Not only that, but the government even denied the existence of this base until it was proven real by Google Earth. Whatever's going on there is serious. Of course, these are claims that aren't often regarded as having scientific evidence. The scientific evidence for alien life is, in some respects, climbing. Recently, NASA announced that one of Saturn's moons may be suitable for alien life due to the rising possibility of an ocean existing on the moon. Despite this discovery, we have long leaned on less direct observation to see if alien life exists. I'm talking, of course, about satellites and radio waves. Sending radio signals into space and waiting the arrival of extraterrestrial radio signals has long been our way of reaching up into the stars and hoping we grab something, or that something grabs us. However, we've only gotten one or two real anomalies, such as the WOW signal. The WOW signal itself is in an extremely unsure place regarding its origin, so we've all but put it on the shelf for later. However, this does not degrade the importance of radio waves for intergalactic communication. In fact, they may be crucial in determining the very core of the question. Instead of looking for communication signals, we can use the existence of radio waves to determine if we're ever going to get any. Keep in mind, the equation I'm about to present to you is, all in all, a very, very rough estimate. However, I do believe it gives us a little bit of insight as to what the possibilities are out there among the stars. In 1960, a man named Frank Drake was working at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory NRAO, in Greek Bank, West Virginia. At that time, the NRAO was making its first attempt to contact alien life. This attempt was dubbed Project Ozma. For four months, the NRAO would listen for signals from the stars for six hours daily. However, no sucked signals ever came. Within a year of the launching of Project Ozma, the NRAO decided they needed to have a meeting about the project and its implications. To provide something for the meeting to build off of, Frank Drake created the Drake Equation. The Drake Equation, in short, is an equation based off of rough estimates that may give us the rough estimate answer as to whether alien life could exist, and if so, how much of it is intelligent. The Drake equation is written as n equals r asterisk times fp times ne times fl times fi times fc times l. In the case of the Drake equation, n represents the number of alien civilizations in our galaxy with which communication is possible. The rest is a little more complicated. R asterisk represents the average rate of star formation in our galaxy, going off of stars per year. FP represents the fraction of those stars that have planets around them. And E represents the average number of habitable planets per star. FL represents the percent of those habitable planets that go on to support life. FI represents the percent of those planets on which the life that develops is intelligent. FC represents the percent of those planets on which the intelligent life is able to communicate on interstellar level. And finally, L represents the amount of years that such a civilization's attempts at communication remain detectable. That, my friends, is called a doozy. There's a lot of info we need there. 
Luckily, we as a species are advanced enough to fill in those gaps. But before we do that, let's make sure we know what we're dealing with. Aside from just Earth-based and extraterrestrial, there are types assigned to civilizations, even though we really only know of our own. We ourselves are considered a Type 0 civilization. We aren't even advanced enough to be on the chart yet. Allegedly, however, we will become a Type 1 civilization in about 100 to 200 years. The chart we're going off of, by the way, is the Kardashev Scale, which was developed in 1964 by a Russian astrophysicist named Nikolai Kardashev. His chart claims that a Type 1 civilization would be able to make use, to the full extent, of the light energy from a neighboring star. A Type 2 civilization would be able to harness the entirety of that star, rather than just getting energy from the star's light. A Type 3 civilization would be able to travel the galaxy. There are several more vague levels above 3, but most agree that after 3, you'd basically have a master race civilization that could harness the energy of the entire universe. Earth, again, is considered a Type 0 civilization that is moving towards Type 1. Why do I mention this? Well, you see, we get a somewhat good look at Sakaar in the Thor Ragnarok trailer, and we see that Sakaar likes to use wormholes to extract, if you will, warriors and junk from other civilizations. This means that they likely aren't capable of traveling the galaxy, or at least they prefer not to. Why when the goods just come to you, right? If we're to believe that, then I would say that Sakaar is likely a Type 2 civilization leaning heavily towards Type 3. We're going to have to consider this variable, because this would mean that not only is Sakaar home to an intelligent society, it's a vastly intelligent one. This variable may mean that we'll have to shrink the results of Drake Equation in the case of those possible civilizations being on the level of the MCU's Sakaar. Okay, now that we're aware of that, let's figure out the Drake Equation. Putting in the numbers, we we see that the year-to-year -year star formation rate of stars in our galaxy is 10. The fraction of those stars that have planets around them is 0.5. The average number of those planets that could be habitable is 2. The fraction of those planets on which life could emerge is 1. The fraction of those planets where that life could go on to become intelligent is 0.1. The fraction of those planets where the intelligent life could go on to try interstellar communication is also 0.1. And finally, the years a civilization's radio waves can still be run is roughly 10,000. Plugging these numbers into the Drake equation, we get a solid estimate of 10 possible planets with intelligent life, capable of communication, in our galaxy. Regarding that planets like Sakaar would be around Type 3 civilizations, it is possible that up to 4 or 5 of these planets are Type 3, depending on their location in the Milky Way galaxy. So, is a planet like Sakaar possible? Yes, it is according to rough estimates anyway. The Drake Equation definitely is one of the more logical ways to view the possibility of life beyond Earth, but even with that estimate, we don't know for sure what's out there. I think that's part of what makes existence so interesting, the fact that there is such a vast expanse out there, and that expanse could be empty or full. We just don't know yet. Like Arthur C. Clarke once said, two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe, or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Hey everyone, hope you all liked that episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as to which superhero or supervillain aspect you guys want me to do next. The outro is back now, so I mean, that's good. See you next week.